we are doing experiment eight, which performing experiment eight, which is synthesis of cyclohexene. Um, uh, this reaction is also considered dehydration of alcohols. So we start with the cyclohexanol, and we are using the dehydrating agent, the phosphoric acid, to um, to do the dehydration of that uh, cyclohexanol in order to prepare cyclo. Um, hexene. When cyclohexene is, is prepared, the boiling point of cyclohexene is much lower than boiling point of cyclohexanol because of the hydrogen bonding of the alcohol and the absence of hydrogen bonding in the product. To separate the product from the reactant, we are going to do distillation and we are performing fractional distillation. The setup for fractional distillation it is explained and you have seen and performed that experiment already, part of experiment two, how to set up fractional distillation. The instruction also is in the lab manual. So I already have set up this um, fractional distillation. Then we have the fractionated column, all the glass joints, they have been greased and clamped together. And uh, we also have the, the thermometer. The only difference here compared to experiment two is that we are using uh, we are using ice bag uh, around our receiving flask. The receiving flask is a boiling flask, and uh, the instruction um, when you read that instruction, it says to collect about between nine and ten millimeter. There is no graduation line on this. So to, for us to find out when to stop, to make your job easier. Here's my, my suggestions and that, that is going to work. I wanna make sure the outside is dry so I can mark it. Then I'm going to get 10 milliliters of, of water because we are, we are going to collect between nine and 10 milliliters. So I'm going to add the 10 milliliters of water and Hold this straight, okay? Now, see how high, what's the height of the liquid in the flask? We can mark the height of the liquid in the flask. So I'm going to mark that on a couple spots here. What is this mark for? How is it going to help me? When the level of the distillate it reaches to this mark. I know I have enough or I have collected 10 milliliters and I can stop the distillation. I don't need the water in there in the in the flask. It's okay to have drops of water. So I'm just going to empty the, the receiving flask. Now I have these marks and I'm going to use it as the as the receiving uh, flask here. Uh, we can use graduate cylinder. But since graduate cylinder is not going to open, uh, close properly, I'm afraid that I would lose some of the, the vapor. Boiling point of cyclohexene is very low. And because it's very low, I'm adding this ice bath here. I'm surrounding my receiving flask with ice so it would capture the vapor and the condenses and it would keep it in the liquid form. We are not going to lose the vapor through this opening of the vacuum, uh, vacuum um, adapter. And uh, all I need at this point to get my chemical, so I'm going to go to the fume hood and get the um, cyclohexanol phosphoric acid and come back. I wanna also add the boiling chips. The order of when to add the boiling chips uh, it really doesn't matter when to add the boiling chips, but you want to make sure before we start the distillation, we add the boiling chips. So I'm adding three to four uh, pieces of the boiling chips, and we add the acid. For the acid, we are going to the fuel hood. Okay, um, for the um, measuring of cyclohexanol, uh, we need... 10 grams based on calculation using the density that is equal to 10.6 milliliter. So I'm going to measure the 10.6 milliliter. I often pour first using the beaker and when it gets close to the mark, uh, then I have it now like close to the mark of 10 milliliter. Then I use the dropper 
uh, to adjust. I add one drop at the time until it reaches the 10.6. We are looking for the meniscus to reach the uh, 10.6 milliliter. More drops. I don't want to add drop by drop from the beginning because that would take a long time for it to reach the 10.6. Pour that into a uh, into our boiling flask. And do you notice that I'm using this like no taste donuts in the in the lab? Um, and we are going to add the phosphoric acid for the three milliliters of the phosphoric acid. I don't know any of you questions. Why didn't I use I didn't pour? Because it's beaker and small amount here. I don't want to spill any of the acids outside, and I don't want to touch the acid. That's why for the three milliliter, I just use the dropper from the from the beginning. I'm going to add slowly from the side of the flask the three milliliter of the phosphoric acid to the boiling flask and can take it back and assemble the uh, fractional distillation and distill and uh, start the distillation and we collect until the distillate reaches the mark that I have on the receiving flask between nine and 10 milliliters. Okay, the flask, the boiling flask is reconnected. I bring the, the heating mantle close enough. It doesn't have to touch, but to be close enough to heat up the flask. Uh, turn on the water gently. So if we to turn on the water, make sure that we have circulation of the cold water in the condenser. And turn on the power regulator. Set the power regulator at around between 50 and 60. General rule we are looking for gentle boiling. If it doesn't start boiling in like five minutes, I will increase by 10 units. If it's boiling too crazy, I will lower the heat. I'm looking for gentle boiling. This time I'm waiting for collection of nine to 10 milliliters. It's fractional distillation. It's going to take time. And to avoid long video, I'm going to pause the video and we come back when we have about 10 milliliters distilled collected. Okay, we have enough liquid to the mark that we had with the marker. So now I can stop the, um, stop the distillation. I just want to say that is known as our desired amount of distillate. So if we got desired amount of distillate, we can stop distillation. There are other cases that we have to stop distillation. Let's say if the, if the flask was drying, if there was no liquid in there, that would be like immediate stop of the, of the distillation. If we saw that there was like a, a fume inside the, inside the flask is like cloud, forming inside the flask that basically acid is being uh, is is vaporizing and in that case also we're going to stop the distillation so but uh, we can, we still have liquid but since we have the 10 milliliter mark we are stopping the the distillation i also want to add a point about this aluminum uh, foil wrapping around the distillation head whenever you're doing fractional distillation if the if it takes too long for your sample to make to the condenser or to the receiving flask, 
you can use the aluminum foil to wrap the distillation head. So the vapor that makes it all the way up here would be um, directed into the, um, into the condenser. So we are going to remove the heat. The one thing about the heating mantle, I also mentioned when we were talking about simple distillation, fractional distillation, if by turning off only, it's not removing the heat. You have to physically lower the ring. That's why the ring was elevated. So we can drop the ring and remove the, the heat. It's still, it's kind of boiling, but we are not going to open that part until the boiling glass is completely cold. For, our product, what we are going to do with our product, we are going to clean up the product and purify it. So I'm going to uh, remove the receiving flask and transfer that. Following the procedure, we are going to transfer it into the um, separator funnel. You want to